Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, and this is Tony Hager. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Our lead story this week, 2015 world team member Zach Ray won a silver medal at 125 on the very final day of the Intercontinental Cup. That was Sunday, and he was on his way to the finals where he would edge out American Bobby Telford 3-2. It was Telford's first major international tournament, and i got to wonder, Hager, do you think he's among the top wrestlers at the weight in the U.S.? I mean, after earning three All-American honors for Iowa, I mean, this transition to freestyle wrestling will be interesting to see. The Hawkeye Wrestling Club is uh, home of two world team members, so they have to be doing something right in Iowa City. Well, they may be doing something right in Iowa City, but remember, you've got Adam Kuhn, you've got the former NCAA champ at NC State. I mean, the heavyweight class that's evolving right now, for me anyway, is very exciting. The future at the weight looks very promising, promising. Indeed. So do you think he's towards the top, or does he have a shot at making the Olympic team? I mean, at this weight class, I think uh, nothing's locked up. The only weight class that's probably locked up is Jordan Burroughs at 74 kilograms. Like you said, there's Adam Kuhn. There's multiple people out that weight class that have a shot. So it's kind of, Tervell Ter is, is kind of not in the light right now. There's, there's multiple people that have opportunities now, I think. So it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes up. I think really the only weight class that's locked up for sure Jordan Burroughs. People were bailing out of that weight class, moving around, trying to get away from him because he has such a lock on it. Jordan Burroughs may be the only promising lock we have at 74 kilos. Well, the cup was also the very first time we saw Kyle Dake. Speaking of a guy who has competed with guys like Jordan Burroughs, Kyle Dake went at 86. It didn't go so well. He fell in the opening round. A cadet world bronze medalist, Azamat Dulebek of Kazakhstan. The score was 10-5. Are you concerned? I mean, traveling is something that Dake is, is not used to doing, overseas anyways. He's wrestled a lot uh, on, uh, on our soil, but uh, competing outside the United States is a whole different ball game. I've talked to Brent Metcalf and some other world team members about the, the, the struggles that they have with flying and getting used to the atmosphere over there. So I think he just needs to have more international competition to, to, get, uh, to get used to this. Well, he's got to get to it awfully quick as does young star Aaron Pico. He plays fifth at 70 kilos, and last week you touched on how you got to have a strong finish to gain back that confidence, confidence lost perhaps with time off. Is fifth strong enough? You know, looking at his results, I mean, he, he has to be pleased. I think I'm pleased because he just scored a ton of points. I mean, 35 points on his way to the semifinals, and uh, he lost a high-scoring match. Uh, oh, was just, it 12 8? Yeah, 12-8, I think was the score. And uh, you know, it, he was just there about getting a bronze medal. You know, it really just kind of didn't put it put put the points on the board for that final match, but uh, high scoring, taking risk is what we wanted to see. All right, so high scoring, risk taking, 12-8. I mean, I love the fact that he was taking shots. There are some people around the world perhaps that are saying that maybe Aaron Pico won't be as dominant as early in his career as some would have expected. I mean, he's still really young. Yeah, he's real young, and again, it's all about experience. He's 100% wrestling full-time, didn't go the college route, so I think 100% media and fans finally realize that uh, it takes a lot to be uh, you know, consistent on the international level, and uh, Pico, you know, I think he had the, the standards were high, so high for him, that uh, you know, he had to fall down a little bit to realize w what it does take to be a successful and consistent wrestler. Well, I know that the Detroit Mercury Wrestling Club, Nike, and all of us here at Global Wrestling News believe in him, and I know most of you folks do as well. Jimmy Kennedy won a silver at 65 on the very first day of the Intercontinental Cup. Are we about to see the reemergence of the Superman, as I call him, Jimmy Kennedy. Dude <laughs> I mean, takes off his glasses and he goes super strong. <laughs> Kennedy, you know, he just feel like he's been lingering around. He, he lost a tight 5-5 criteria match in the gold medal match. And, uh, you know, overall, overall, I think he just wrestled really great. That weight class, it's, again, that, that weight class is up to air, up, up for air. Or up in the air. <laughs> See, it's your choice, really, where it is. But I guarantee you, James Green, Metcalf, and the others have a lot of things to say about it as well. You know, when Kennedy's on a roll, though, he can wrestle awfully tough. Wrestling fans, we'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we're going to hear from Hollywood, Wayne Boyd, about his event Friday night in Las Vegas, among other things. Stay tuned. All right, welcome, welcome back. 
they tell me it's time for our next segment. It's As I See It with Hollywood Wayne Boyd. Hey, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Tony. It's always great to be here on a great day. I'm wearing my What It Takes shirt, not my Kyle Snyder shirt today, but What It Takes. People always ask me, what does that mean? Well, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club created this shirt with me because what it takes means what does it take to be the best we can be? I don't care if you're a school teacher, a mother, a father, a producer, a lawyer. What does it take to be your best? And the answer is attitude. Attitude and characteristics that make things happen. Perseverance, commitment. These are the things you have to have if you want to be a success. If you want to pick up one of these shirts, you can do it at tmwc1.com. Get a shirt for yourself. Love that you're watching. Now let's get on to the wrestling world. The Intercontinental Championships over this past weekend, we did very well. Zach Ray takes the silver. Jimmy Kennedy takes the silver. Aaron Pico had a great performance. Won three big matches. Beat three Russians in a row. Just missed taking the bronze medal. Another one of our good guys uh, who had not wrestled international, Bobby Telford of Iowa, three-time All-American, had a great performance, just minute, missed the bronze medal. Looking, looking over our list of guys, uh, going forward, we're getting tougher all the time. Zach Ray is moving very well. Right now, he's maybe the number one ranked guy. He's going to have trouble with Tyrell Fortune. We don't know what Tervel Delognev is going to do following his surgery, but we'll find out. Looking at my notes here now, we've got um, Prowl coming up Friday night, October 23rd. Oh, by the way, Kyle Dake made his first showing at the Continental Championships and had a good match at 86 kilos. He didn't win, and I know Kyle Dake, he wants to win. He'll do nothing but get better at that weight class. Back to Prowl, October 23rd. That's coming up Friday night, probably tonight as you watch this show, folks. Got some great matchups there, Obi Blanc. Andrew Hochstrasser, watch those guys, good match. Nazar Kaczewski wrestling uh, Nate Carr, good match there. After the Prowl meet, we've got the All-Star meet. Comes up November 1st, Georgia Tech, that's a Sunday at their arena there. And you got three or four of our NCAA championships, Derringer, Martinez, Tomasello, a couple other guys in there. Going to be some great wrestling at the All-Star meet. Moving right along from there, we go to the New York AC. New York AC, Russia sending a terrific team. We're going to compete there. The winners qualify for the April Iowa trials for the Olympics. Big tournament in New York. Very exciting. The 6th and 7th. We come right out of New York, and we're off to Iran. Team has developed very well. We leave on the 21st. We're probably going to have another prowl meet on the 20th in Arizona, and we're off to Iran to compete for the World Clubs Cup. Uh, lineup looks good. You've got the lineup. We've talked about it. Uh, might be some changes at heavyweight. We're waiting to find out, but stay tuned for the Iran Iranian tournament. There's $50,000 at stake for first place, and we're going there to win. So that's exciting. Following Iran, December, we've got the U.S. Open National Championships, and they're going to qualify 126 wrestlers in all three styles for the Iowa Trials in April. That's Greco, women's freestyle, men's freestyle, seven qualifiers in 18 weight classes, 126 wrestlers trying out for that Olympic team. If there's one event you see this year, you've got to buy a ticket and get to Iowa. The University of Iowa is hosting the final Olympic trials. Wonderful wrestling. Well, I hear Dana White might step down at UFC and he just got involved with us with our freestyle and our Olympic wrestling and seeing us as a bridge to UFC. So I don't know if Dana's leaving or not. That's going to be interesting to watch going forward. Uh, that's the rumors I hear. Well, folks, it's always great to be here coming to you from California. Scott, Tony, you guys are doing a great job if I haven't told you that lately. Keep it up. I'm Wayne Boyd for Takedown TV. Wayne talks about the t-shirt he's wearing. You've heard him say it over and over again. It's what it takes. Wayne Boyd does what it takes to get stuff done. 
I mean, he, he has all these great shirts, uh, Deron Wynn, Kyle Snyder, and now What It Takes. I've never, I haven't seen that yet. I think actually I saw it on a, on, a, on a side badge for a sweatshirt a while back. Never knew what it meant, but to Wayne Boyd, he lives by that every day. He does whatever it takes to get it done, and uh, thank you for uh, joining us today, Wayne. Yep, absolutely. We'll take a, another quick time out. You're watching Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. Earlier on Global Wrestling News, we talked about Kyle Dake and his move to a different and new weight class and his lack of success overseas. Joining us now is manager Nick Garone. Nick, how are you? How you doing, Scott? Thanks for having me. Well, Kyle traveled all the way to Russia and got beat out the first round. Does this change his thoughts on moving up to 86? Actually, no, not at all. Um, he had a, listen, he, this is his first transition up to the weight. He had an opportunity to go over there. Kyle is the type of individual that would never, never say this. He's probably going to kill me for even mentioning this, but he really didn't feel well over there. He went out there and competed anyway. Um, and, uh, if anything, I think this has, has, has made him more motivated to go up to 86 kilos, to have an opportunity to go against these guys and compete in more events at 86, get acclimated to the weight, get a chance to wrestle the bigger guys. But he's all in. He's going up to 86. He's all in at 86 kilos. Nick, when will Kyle be back in international competition? And will it be at 86? Um, yes, he will be at 86, and right now, I'm not sure of the event names, but I know he's looking at a couple of events uh, at uh, right around uh, Thanksgiving time um, to compete at 86 kilos again, and uh, he's excited. He's a guy that when he has, he's always responded very well and has come back very strong when he's had a little, uh, you know, he's had some some glitches here and there. In in He hasn't lost much in his career, but he's looking forward to getting in another event wrestling all year at that weight and getting an opportunity to prepare himself, not just to make an Olympic team. You know, people speak about making an Olympic team. Kyle speaks about winning a gold medal. And I think to have a year and make the decision now was very important for him because this gave him that year to go out there, compete against these guys, get a feel for it. It's a different type of wrestling because they're not as active. Uh, they're a little slower, but there's strengths that Kyle can, could, can figure out and He's good at that. You know, he's, he's a winner at every level. So this is just another situation where Kyle is going up another weight class and trying to win another title. So we're excited about it. Well, he had a great showing at the Grapple at the Garden last year in Greco. Has he thought about making a permanent switch? He, you know, it, it was amazing what he did. Uh, last year, we were going to put a freestyle event together. Matt Lindland had approached us and said, why doesn't he wrestle a Greco match? At first, you know, I was like, no, we're going to go freestyle. But then... When I went to Kyle, Kyle said, listen, if you guys can get me the reigning world champion to wrestle, just another Kyle Date comment, if you can get me the reigning world champion in Greco-Roman, I'll wrestle Greco. So called up Matt within 24 hours. Matt Lindley calls me back, goes, we got him. Called up Kyle, he says, we got him. He goes, we're on, let's do it. And for what he, I mean, just an amazing performance, loses six to three, you know, got a push out at the end, but... Could have been very easily four, three, five, three. I mean, against the reigning world champion and not wrestling Greco for years and years was a, it was a testament of what kind of athlete he is. And so, yes, that was on the table at the time to possibly make that move or wrestle both. And uh, but Kyle, his 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 goals and his dreams since he was a little kid was to win the Olympic gold medal in freestyle. And uh, and I think that's what he's going to things can change, you know, the way things change. But I think as of right now, today, he's going to go up to 86 kilos and try to win that gold medal in Rio at, in freestyle. Nick, we appreciate the time today. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks, Scott. Well, a man that knows a thing or two about going from freestyle to Greco, for sure, is Sherzad Amati. He made American wrestling history, indeed world history, last weekend winning gold in Greco and freestyle at the Veteran World Championships in Athens, Greece. Well, we've seen plenty of gold medals from the Veteran World Championships in freestyle, but just a few in Greco. I mean, he made history doing uh, this in both. I mean, he's only the sixth wrestler to win a Greco title for the Americans. 
you know, to make history on uh, in wrestling's birthplace is, had to have been something special to see. Well, special indeed. We'll take a look at some of the pictures sent in from around the world, and we appreciate it. Special thanks to Shirz Adamati for joining us on Takedown Wrestling Radio just hours after his final victory. It was good to see him win the way he did. Yeah, it was good to see these guys just continuing to battle and wrestle and represent the United States. My hat's off to them. They didn't even know you wore a hat. I, yeah, I don't have a hat. If you had a hat, it would be If awesome. I had a hat, I'd, have, I'd do it. Well, we'll talk more about hats when we come back after the break. An in-depth look at each match in the first ever Prowl in Las Vegas. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. What do you say? Let's take a more in-depth look at the very first ever Pro Wrestling League event. It'll be in Las Vegas, 57 kilos. OB Blanc scheduled to go for the Finger Lakes Wrestling Club. Andrew Hochstrasser for Team Titan Mercury. It's got to be one of the biggest matches of the night, at least in my opinion. Your thoughts? Yeah, th this is the premier bout of the duel based on resumes, uh, but it will be the first time these two have ever wrestled. Uh, Blanc wrestled 125 in college, where he was an All-American for Lock Haven. Hochstrasser was a 33-pounder for Boise State and made the NCAA Finals in 2011. Uh, Blanc went on to wrestle 55 kilograms in the old weight classes and had even more success than he did in college. He won the U.S. Open twice, 10 2013 and won the world team trials both uh, of those years as well but uh, he failed the drug test after the 2013 world team trial so he didn't compete at worlds that year due to two-year suspension so him coming back this is going to be very interesting to see how he responds to the wrestling world because i feel like it's changed in two years now yeah, dude is very very good remember the results of the spanish grand prix he failed the place there but something tells me He's back on track, training-wise and performance-wise. Hochstrasser has also uh, had some success in freestyle after being a two-time All-American in college. He was originally a 60-kilo guy under the old weight classes, but a split time between 57 and 61. The former Bronco has lost in the finals of each of the past two senior nationals of 57, as well as the Copa Brazil gold at that weight. He won the last two Pan Am championships at 61, so he knows how to win at 61. Yeah, this is, again, this is the premier match. They have experience in college, but uh, to put it, on, put it on the line here at the first ever, uh, I'm excited for that match. Well, the next bout we're going to talk about, 65, it'll be between Nate Carr for Finger Lakes and Nazar Kolchinsky of Titan Mercury. Now, these two have met. It was a dual meet almost a year ago at Global Wrestling Championships. Nazar came out on top, 11-6. Should it be another high-scoring event? I mean, it, it was the highest-scoring match of the night, and, and Carr was a JUCO champ. Uh, Nazar, three-time NCAA champ for uh, UW Oshkosh. Um, this match is intriguing to me mainly because they don't come from Division One school and, and seeing how they did last time and scoring 17 points. I mean, that's what fans want to see is the high-scoring points, so I'd expect nothing less Friday. Yep, 74 kilos, Nestor Tafur, Finger Lakes versus Quentin Godley of Titan Mercury. And I know Tafur fell to Godley 11-1, but what is your thoughts? You know, Godley has just like exploded on the freestyle scene the past three years. I mean, an unremarkable college career. It started by making finals at University Games 2013. He lost to David Taylor, not a, not a bad name to lose, lose to, but uh, he, he has qualified for the World Team Trials in each of the past three seasons. So, you know, um, I, I think that uh, he's ready for this opportunity. He, he's going to be probably the favorite on, on paper. Heading to 86 kilos, we'll see Austin Trotman, Finger Lakes versus Duran Wynn of Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, and of course out of Ames, Iowa. Duran Wynn had an impressive tech fall in their last duel, but can he do it again Friday against the always strong Trotman? You know, Trotman has uh, won two senior level tournaments, but doesn't have the experience Wynn has. I mean, one thing that could come into play here, you know, Trotman's length on Wynn, you know, that, that could be uh, something that Wynn has definitely have to prepare for. You know, Wynn is very low and he, he, he tacks, and I think if, if Trotman can keep his hands on him and keep him from attacking, you know, he'll, he'll have uh, an upper hand. But uh, at the end of the day, I think, you know, Wynn, with his experience with Pan Am Championship, Medvev, I mean, he, he'll be the favorite I'm going in. I'm going to interrupt you, though. You can't use height as an, as an excuse. Take a look at uh, uh, Daniel Cormier. People said he was undersized for a heavyweight spot in the UFC. Well, look at what he's done. The only guy to beat him was super, super tall, but also super tough. That was John Jones. So if we look at Duran Wynn, his ability to win is based on, for me, mental toughness and experience. Nike wouldn't have signed him 
okay, if they didn't believe in what we think he's capable of doing. All right, when will be the favorite going into this bout? My prediction, yours? When's the favorite? Favorite. Moving up, we'll go to 97 kilos, Enoch Francois, Finger Lakes Wrestling Club, Kale Byers, Titan Mercury. Uh, this is a remarkable bout for me because the guys are so evenly matched. Your thoughts? This is the first year Francois has been uh, at 97 kilograms. He spent the last several years at uh, 86 kilograms. So, you know, the biggest factor in this matchup will be if he has adjusted to the upper, you know, going up. And, uh, you know, last year he, when he did bump up, he lost 4-0. to zero. So To um, win Mahalik. Yeah, to win Mahalik. So, you know, he's got to hopefully he has some experience wrestling those upper level guys, upper weight guys. So we'll, we'll see if uh, he comes prepared. All right, here's the big one. 125 kilos, Justin Grant, Finger Lakes, Tyrell Fortune, another Nike guy, another Titan Mercury guy. Titan Mercury walks into the heavyweight battle with an unquestionable advantage. As a matter of fact, these two met last year, and Fortune won how many times? He won twice in the both matches. He won five, and then he opened it up and won by 11 one tech fall at the Bill Farrell International. So uh, the, you're exactly right. He comes in unquestionably the biggest favorite probably in this duel. Absolutely. Wrestling fans, sadly, we're up against the clock and out of time. Our executive producer has been Andrew F. Barth, our producer, Wayne Eric Boyd. For Tony Hager, I'm Scott Casper from our studio, 3B, here in Des Moines, Iowa. We'll see you next week for Global Wrestling News.